This episode of Unbox was made possible thanks to viewers like you. Thank you. Here we go, off the rails, but you know it's time to raise our sails. It's freedom like you never knew. Two bags, <laughs> or a pass, yeah. send a word, I'll be there in a flash. Never bet against Nintendo. Sure, I may not be the most unbiased person to make that statement. Ow. But it stands true. There is a reason this company has stood the test of time, especially at moments when their backs were against the wall, they came out swinging the hardest. Two years ago, the Wii U was the butt of all jokes, but now, with the Switch having been out for only eight months, everything has been turned around. With a steady release of major hits and third parties swarming to the platform, and just to top it all off, Mario's biggest title to date has arrived just in time for Christmas. Mario Odyssey begins right in the action, with Bowser, looking dapper as ever, getting the upper hand on our favourite plumber, destroying his trademark hat and taking off with Peach in his airship, with the intention of tying the knot with her. And I say great, about tying me an honest woman out of her. Being a single father is hard as well. When you're not busy taking over the world or go-karting, it's difficult to keep Junior's game hours maintained and keep him from playing stuff like Honey Pop. Landing in the mysterious Cap Kingdom, Mario was introduced to a ghost hat named Cappy, whose sister was also kidnapped by Bowser, and they team up by Cappy taking the form of his signature hat. This is the main mechanic of Odyssey, with Mario being able to fling Cappy in numerous directions. There is another feature, but I'll get to that in a moment. On the technical side of things, words truly can't describe how gorgeous Aussie looks. It's not just a steady 60 frames per second or the absolute detailed level design, from a prehistoric land, to a sun-beached island, to the bustle of New Donk City. It's the little things too, like the stitching on Mario's overalls, or the way his hat bounces on his head, or how his clothes can look wet or dirty depending on their surroundings. Of course, the brand new feature in Odyssey is the Possession, I mean Capture, ability, which has you throw Cappy onto Pacific creatures, which will let you take control of them, and then discard them in a disoriented mess when you're finished with them. Just like in real life. But regardless of how creepy it can be, it's actually quite ingenious, with every single Capture having their own characteristics, like frogs being able to jump higher, Goombas not stepping on ice, and a tree being... Well, a tree. As well as that, the level structure has been changed drastically. No more do you go to a level and select from one of several star missions. Instead, the dozen or so worlds are littered with the game's collectibles. Power moons. And when I say littered, I mean, oh god, we're drowning in these damn things! It varies from world to world how many moons there are, from 25 to literally over 100! and you get them from doing everything, from smashing a box, playing one of the many 2D pixel challenges, wooing a female Goomba, time puzzles, or even scratching your own butt. That being said, the boss battles lack any real creativity to the point where you repeat the same six boss battles two to three times. However, compared to other Mario games, the climax is reached fairly early on. I was barely 20 hours in when I had enough moons to have the final confrontation with Bowser and the credits rolled. Oh, spoiler alert. There were still hundreds of moons left for me to collect, but besides completion, there wasn't any real goal. That being said, there's more than enough here to keep you entertained. With every world begging to have every nook and cranny explored, the large amount of outfits you can change into, and a big plus in my books is them finally FINALLY getting rid of lives! Every time you die, you simply lose 10 coins. 10 coins you actually have a chance of getting back. As for controls, while Odyssey supports all control styles, it's painfully obvious which control they would like you to use. With a joy in each hand, Odyssey tries to recapture the feeling of Galaxy in some ways, with flicks and such to throw Cappy. However, I played the majority of the game using my Pro Controller. 
I paid a hundred bucks for this thing, I'm gonna use it. And for the most part, it works as well as you expect, with Mario handling as well as he always does. Just don't expect me to pull off that damn trick jumping. But to do a spin attack, you need to flip the controller to the side, which can get frustrating. Regardless of some very small issues, Mario Odyssey is a game you'll be unable to put down for a long time. And it's a welcome return to the explorer based levels of 64 and Sunshine. It just makes me wish our Delfino made an appearance. But now, I'm in a very awkward situation concerning the end of year countdown. Ooh. Mm, oh, this is gonna be a tough one. <laughs> I'll see you all next time. Mm, uh.